Okie dokie. Welcome to the inside of my power cabinet. What you're looking at is the uh, pack that we just put together in the last video. So there are six Nissan Volt or Nissan Leaf modules at eight volts apiece. So each one of these is eight volts. We have eight, 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 twenty-four, eight, 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 twenty-four. Then we then parallel those two together. That's what we did last video. This is the parallel positive connection. This red six gauge cable is the negative um, parallel connection. What we're gonna do first is work from the back back here so that we always are working towards us. Take this negative off here and we're going to add the negative inverter connection. Um, golden rule of connecting a solar system is never ever connect your solar panels first uh, to your charge controller you always want to give your uh, panels somewhere to put that in that energy or give that charge controller somewhere to put that energy if you connect your charge controller to your panels first and if they're not connected to the batteries you're turning your charge controller into a giant heat sink you know, if it's during peak production of day, that could be pretty bad. Um, it won't necessarily spark or instantly melt when you first connect it, so it might seem like it's okay, but you're not giving anywhere for all that uh, all that electricity to go, and it'll eventually melt the inside um, of of your of your uh, charge controller. So that was the negative of the inverter. We're going to come over here to this other terminal, which is essentially the same thing because it's a paralleled connection. And we are going to add our negative connection for our charge controller to here. Um, it is on a handy dandy little uh, L, just like a, these, these, these things are called L, L terminal lugs. Um, this is a two gauge wire, if I didn't already say that, these are a two gauge L terminal lug. These uh, charge controller wires coming from the charge controller to the batteries are a 10 gauge uh, wire. And so I have a, I think it's a 10 to 14, or maybe it's an 8 to 12 uh, terminal lug for them for that 10 gauge wire. And they are pretty convenient because they can just hang out like this. This is the connection. This is my negative wire for my charge controller. I'm going to put it on top of the connection of my parallel connection from the two battery bank or two battery packs to make the bank bank connection I guess is that the, that's what you really want to call it so what we're doing here is making the uh, last connection or the last negative connection that we're gonna make right here I do not have a, a 12 volt step down if if you did have a 12 volt step down say let's play this power uh, box uh, block whatever is a 12 volt step down you're going to have four wires coming from it but two of it's going to be coming to your battery bank straight to the battery bank terminals it's not in between two pieces of equipment i don't some people like to try to plug it into the system they're drawing on a piece of paper or whatever you are uh, creating a whole different 12 volt electrical system other than the 110 AC. So play like this is your step down box. It's got four wires on it. One's got or two have got to go to the battery bank. So your your negative and your positive. So these th this would have two wires coming straight to these terminals, and then the other two wires come from this would go to your your fuse block or fuse box or blade box or whatever it is for all your 12 volt appliances and and connections and what uh, whatever you might have. I don't have any of that. Um, I have 24 volt lights that go straight into my charge controller terminals. Uh, load terminals that is on the charge controller. Uh, they mirror the voltage of this whole battery bank and so even if it fluctuates during during use um, that's still it powers my lights because my lights are, are, are a ranged voltage. They will work anywhere between 6 and 20 it's either 24 or 26 volts I think um, and so that works perfect for the charge controller. It doesn't matter if the battery is at 100% or at 10%, they'll still power the lights is what I'm getting at. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is add the uh, positive connection from the inverter. We might get a little bit of spark, probably not, until we add the, uh, the full circuit of the charge controller. Um, and obviously, no, we didn't get much of a spark there. But we will clamp that one down and just for not doubling down on too much to any of these terminals like we've already got two here and two here so I'm going to try to keep that from happening too much by putting my L terminal lug my 10 gauge or 8 to 12 whatever it is some of these terminals have um, a range that they'll fit obviously 
And so I'm going to do this. I, unlike the negative one, I am obviously uh, going to put the wire straight into this one after I install it because uh, of sparking and sparking issues. Um, we'll probably get a tiny bit of a spark here. This is completing everything but the hot connection of the solar panels. So we essentially will be, by connecting this in, we're going to be giving the charge controller power from the batteries. So. Um, you should see lights and everything come on on the charge controller. I can't hold it and do this at the same time You're probably gonna see a spark, but I'll show you the charge controller is blank right now to prove that I guess I could There's the charge controller where no lights nothing Okay, I'm gonna screw up my whole rig here filming if I go too far, but uh, here's the the, uh, the the final connection we're gonna plug in the charge controller probably a little bit of a spark. Yep, a little bit of a spark Lights are blinking, the charge controller came on, the Bluetooth blanked, the module, the Bluetooth uh, thing that you gotta plug in there to connect. So now we've got power to the charge controller. Charge controller is still registering night mode because the panels aren't plugged in. I'm gonna plug, uh, turn on the inverter, and yes, we've got 23.3. Look, I'll show you 23.3 on the uh, charge controller, 23.1 on the inverter. Sorry, tape in the way there. Um, none of that really matters. That's not the point of this video. I just wanted to show how to hook all this up. I am going to throw the positive connection of my solar panels back on there. I just had a little bit of tape on this one just to be safe. But just to connect it all back on there, I'll have it everything running the way it should, optimal. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the solar panels back in. Tighten that guy down. Oh, there we go. All right. We have successfully doubled the capacity of our uh, battery bank storage in my off-grid system here. We went from 1.2, 1.3 kilowatts to 3.2, 3.3 kilowatts. Um, those are not matching numbers. I understand that. Be and that's because I bought these six modules at four different times. Um, they came from four different cars. They have four different capacities because they were used uh, and they had different mileage that used at different lengths. Um, I don't recommend that, but when I was com uh, compiling all the com uh, components of these, this system, the very first, you know, over a year and a half ago, starting all this, I, I didn't know if any of this was going to work. And so I was spending the least amount of money that I could trying to assemble this, trying to make it as easy as possible and as cheap as possible for everybody out there. And I think I did it, you know. The, the addition of these three modules makes this, the total of this whole system uh, still under $1,300. It's about $1,278, $1,268. Um, but with the, the original three, that still powered everything in my life, just not as long as I wanted. I mean, I could still run my air conditioner for several hours a day. I was mowing my lawn electrically, rototilling my garden electrically, chainsaws, power saws. Uh, you know, there was I haven't run into anything that it won't power. I've I tripped the system doing too many things at once, but um, not a single individual appliance that I have won't power from three modules. And I only had three modules for the first four or five months. And the only reason I got three more is because I just wanted to do everything that I was always or already doing for longer. You know, I wanted to be able to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and cook a four course meal if I wanted to all with electricity. Uh, you know, I, I have fun making ridiculous videos proving the power of these systems and proving the capability of the, and how cheap it is, um, you know, by turning my electricity or turning my uh, air conditioner on full blast, turn, at the same time clicking the space heater on, at the same time clicking the uh, 1000 watt cooktop and then walking outside and mowing my lawn all simultaneously. I don't do those things to uh, just sh show off for purely boasting reasons. It's to prove that this is possible. That the price doesn't add up in a lot of people's heads. Uh, it, solar has been hard and expensive forever uh, up until you know last year or this year literally uh, it, you know if you didn't have five grand you weren't going to have an off-grid solar system that could power an, off an air conditioner now you can do it for less than a grand and you're getting batteries that are going to last longer are more powerful are smaller easier to work with more user-friendly cheaper 
and you're literally saving the environment at the same time. You've heard my rant on that one, but these things, all those that I just went over and more, but the icing on the cake for me is the fact that lithium ion is one of the most nastiest chemicals that we extract from this rock that we all have to live on together. And if we can do anything to reuse the shit that's already been put in so many of our devices and appliances and machinery and all. I mean, the shit is everywhere in our lives that you probably don't even realize. Um, but those bigger machineries require a lot of power and they, you know, at a certain point, those, these batteries don't power those large equipment, but hell, I'm not going to be able to put the stress that a, that a car put on it in my tiny little off-grid system like this, you know. Imagine the juice that it takes to take a four-door sedan from zero to 60 in under three seconds. You think that I'm going to be able to put that kind of load with, with my air conditioner, you know, with, with, with my cooktop or my, or my uh, lawnmower or whatever, you know, all that shit combined. I could have six MIG welders lined up at the same time operating a mobile meth lab, and, and it would still not be compared to some of the extreme uh, loads and stress that are put on these modules inside of an electric vehicle, you know, 480 volt supercharge. What the fuck? I mean, excuse my language, but like you would need six school buses with 12 panels on each to get to that, uh, you know, depending on the panels, I guess, but, uh, there'd be no way, you know, as long as you keep it under 15 modules for 24 volts, you know, 12 to 15 modules would be my cutoff there. You might want to go to 48 volt at that, but there's a lot of people out there using these in 48 volt systems, and there's nothing wrong with that if you need that big of a system, and or you have uh, washers or dryers or 240 equipment, air conditioners that you want that 48 volt system for. That's fine. I wanted to make a system that everybody could put together that didn't need all that shit you know i don't i'm excusing my language again but i don't live in an area of the world where uh air conditioning is required you know all year long i live in an area of the world where people look at air conditioners the same way people look at furnaces in in florida you know like i had my air conditioner but really probably only needed it needed it whatever that means um for six weeks you know if even that otherwise it was a pure convenience and a fan would do just as well but on the flip side of that i you know i have nine to ten months of the year or eight to ten months of the year where uh, I have to have heat, you know, like it's the other end of that spectrum where people in Florida need the air conditioner. I need the heat, you know, I, I heat electrically and with fire. I have a, a fireplace that does most of my heating, but I also have a, a one of, you know, the two bit $30 Kmart special uh, floor heater things that is horribly inefficient, but it can still, you know, I could still click that thing on for three hours if I wanted to from this, you know, if it was during the day with some sun, I could, that would be longer, but um, that's, a, that's a lot of space heater in, in 118 square feet, which is another thing that I like to try to remind people of. This is the bare bone system that, you know, for, for one person, one and a half people, uh, and, and, and you can adapt this technology to whatever your family size or size of bus or RV. I, I don't want to make it seem like you have to use it this way, you know. You can have your breaker boxes and you can have your fuses in between and everything and you can have your 12 volt uh, appliances and all your refrigerators and, and, and be efficient with your charging of 12 volt. Uh, but, uh, I just didn't do it that way because A, my initial motivation and the reason I wanted to create this whole project was to make it actually accessible to as many people as possible and you know a thousand dollars still is a lot of money to a lot of people I understand that uh, I don't want to belittle that but uh, it's a hell of a lot less than five or six thousand dollars what it was you know two or three years ago that people had to fork out to and then probably had someone do it for them you know that was another part of this is I wanted you guys to be able to do it uh, and not have to have 14 specialists and get consulting from this guy and that guy this stuff is pretty much plug and play, and it gets better every single day. Uh, some of the technology that I'm using has already been replaced with something better and more user friendly. But uh, the stuff that I have is, in, in my in my opinion, you know, I'm not an electrician. I came from uh, 25 plus years in in professional kitchens. I'm a chef. I don't. This is not what I've done my whole life. But I was able to, in under you know a year, teach myself how to put this together from scratch. I didn't have a YouTube video. Nobody was telling me how, there was no forum about 24 volt systems with leaf modules. Yeah, there are several people doing 48 volts, but not in a, in a super economical, super easy to install system like this for less than a thousand dollars anyway. 
Okay, I'm done ranting and raving. We got our capacity doubled here for another two hundred and forty dollars. We added on to our just as much as we started with. We now have six modules. We now have two groups of three. We now have two or two twenty-four volt batteries that are paralleled together. We are sitting comfortable now that everything's plugged in. I guess I can take this off this and show you that we are fully charging. We are. Pulling in a quick, uh, that's trivia for everybody, huh? We are 29.3 volts at 0 0.1. <laughs> that's because it's evening and the storm just pulled in. But uh, that's not very many uh, watts. But how many is that? 29.6, 29.5 times, 29.5 times, call it 0 0.17. Yeah, 0 0.17. How many watts is that? Not very many. Anyway, we doubled our capacity. Uh, our charge controller is saying the same thing, 23.3 or 23.2. We got 23.1 right here. That's good enough for me. We are golden. Doubled the capacity, guys. Still under $1,300 for the whole system.